Anderson Air Force Base in Guam saw the very first crash of the stealth B-2 aircraft Spirit of Kansas. Footage shows the aircraft speeding down the runway and starting to gain some altitude. The wing soon hits the ground and bursts, after which the aircraft slams against the runway in a cloud of smoke and flames. Spirit of Kansas the Spirit of Kansas aircraft was one of the original B-2s developed by Northrop Grumman at the height of the Cold War. The stealth bomber, an impressive plane, could launch an attack against anti-aircraft defenses, delivering 50,000 pounds of munitions and succeeding in missions that would be impossible for most planes. Northrop built these planes from the 1980s to the early 2000s, creating a small fleet for an estimated cost of over $40 billion. A small group, including the Spirit of Kansas, were sent to Guam so the pilots could quickly access America's Asian rival nations, most importantly, China. Troubleshooting Solution The B-2 utilizes a flight control system for pilots based around 24 ports transducer units that deliver essential data. The PTUs measure air pressure, leading four different computers to independently assess the angle of attack, side slip, altitude, and airspeed. Before the calculations are moved by the flight control system to the visible flight control panel, three out of four computers must have matching analyses. The island of Guam has a tropical rainforest climate that almost mimics the tropical monsoon climate during dry seasons. This humid environment called for frequent calibrations in the air data systems. When Anderson Air Force Base mechanics reached out to Northrop Grumman for advice on how to deal with the weather, Northrop Grumman hadn't installed any measures to deal with it. So the support engineer suggested using the pitot heater to dry the port transducer units before calibration. This heating system was intended to prevent icing, but using it extensively while on the ground could overheat the system. Mechanic technicians used the pitot heater successfully, but no protocol was formalized in any reports or in a technical order change. Because of this, only some of the pilots and crews using the B-2s during initial deployment knew that the air data systems were sensitive to moisture and that the pitot heater could be used to solve the issue. Warning Signs the first warning signs for the Spirit of Kansas came on the morning of February 25, 2008. After four months in Guam, it was preparing to return to regular formation at the Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, along with another B-2. The Spirit of Kansas would be serving as the lead plane during the return flight. The pre-flight check took place at around 9.30 a.m., and the crew of Spirit of Kansas got an air data cal message during it, meaning that the air data system needed calibration. Unfortunately, neither the flight control specialist nor the pilot knew that the pitot heater could be used to dry up the components, so they carried out the calibration without it. This caused 23 out of the 24 PTUs to render incorrect data. One hour later, in preparation for takeoff, the pitot heater was actually turned on, which dried up the sensors. It was too late by then. The wrong data made the altimeter show an elevation 136 feet higher than the actual airfield elevation, which the two-man crew did not notice. 19 seconds into the takeoff roll, the master caution light turned on, as did the caution status for the flight control system. The crew considered canceling takeoff to check on the system, but six seconds later, the caution lights went away. All instruments then seemed to indicate that takeoff conditions were within the necessary parameters. This information was incorrect. Accident The Spirit of Kansas pilot rotated the aircraft's nose for takeoff in an incorrectly indicated speed of 142 knots, when in reality wind speed was somewhere between 132 and 134 knots. He used normal stick force to set up the climb rate and pitch altitude, but again the incorrect data resulted in a miscalculated negative angle of attack, or nose down attitude, which set the aircraft nose up to 30 degrees. The pilot lost control of the aircraft with the conditions making it unrecoverable. Little could be done as the aircraft oscillated and inevitably rolled to the left. 
Its left wing scraped against the ground. Thinking fast, the crew members ejected from the aircraft. The B-2 dragged over an 18,964 square meter stretch between parallel runways. The wreckage spread out over the area, with fires that took a total of eight hours to be put out. The destruction of Spirit of Kansas, which had flown for 5,100 hours under the 393rd Bomb Squad based in Missouri, represented the first crash of a B-2. One pilot was evaluated and discharged rapidly from the Guam Naval Hospital, while the other remained hospitalized for his injuries. Causes After the crash, the U.S. Air Force Accident Board reviewed the conditions under which it took place. They discovered the root of the mistake lay in the miscalculated ADS system during calibration caused by moisture in the PTUs. As mentioned earlier, no formal procedure had been established to deal with moisture. The flight line technicians had not increased the requirements for air data calibration either during the deployment of these planes to Guam. Part of the problem had been that the air data system issue with calibration was not really observable during maintenance checks, but rather during pre-flight checks. Only one supervisor and a handful of technicians were aware of the moisture problem and how to solve it. The crew was found to have acted correctly under official standards and procedures. Furthermore, the complex interface used by the B-2 aircraft was too technical for most of the crew members involved. Few knew the importance of the air data calibration, resulting in none of them raising the issue in a formal complaint before the accident. The findings of the June 5, 2008 report were conclusive. The loss of Spirit of Kansas resulted in about $1.4 billion in property damage. Thankfully, one of the pilots only suffered from minor injuries. His co-pilot, on the other hand, underwent an extensive hospital stay for compression fractures to his spine, but he was able to recover completely. As a result of the accident, the Air Force's 509th Bomb Wing grounded all B-2s while safety procedures were reviewed. The temporary suspension saw all flight operations canceled until April of 2008. After the review, PITO heat was integrated into the calibration procedure.